I talked in a previous video about Milton Glaser and his lecture, What I Have Learned, and the 10 bullet points that are in there. If you uh, don't know what I'm talking about, there's a link to that previous video down in the description below so you can get caught up. I decided I was going to take a look at the, all 10 points, and I didn't know if I was going to make videos about all 10 of them, but there are a few of them in there that absolutely cry out to be talked about in the context of the things that I talk about. And today I want to talk about number four. And number four's title is Professionalism is Not Enough, or The Good is the Enemy of the Great. And when he put this as early in my career, I couldn't wait to become a professional. That was my complete aspiration in my early life because professionals seemed to know everything, not to mention they got paid well for it. Later, I discovered after working for a while that professionalism itself was a limitation. After all, what professionalism means in most cases is limiting risks. So if you want to get your car fixed, you go to a mechanic who knows how to deal with transmission problems in the same way each time. I suppose if you needed brain surgery, you wouldn't want the doctor to fool around and invent a new way of connecting your nerve endings. Please, doc, do it in the way that's worked in the past. Unfortunately, in our field, in a so-called creative activity, I've begun to hate that word. I especially hate it when it is used as a noun. I shudder when I hear someone called a creative. Anyhow, when you are doing something in a recurring way to diminish risk or doing it in the same way as you've done it before, it's clear why professionalism is not enough. After all, what is desirable in our field is continuous transgression. Professionalism does not allow for that because transgression has to encompass the possibility of failure. And if you're a professional, your instinct is not to fail. It is to repeat success. Professionalism as a lifetime aspiration is a limited goal. And I had to think about that one a great deal because I know there are many people who get into this because they have aspirations towards professionalism. They want to be a writer with a capital W. They want to, they want to write work and they want to sell it. All of that is absolutely valid. That is a totally valid reason to do any of this. My own reasons are a little bit different from that. I don't do this necessarily because I want to be commercially successful. I do this because I want to have finished work that I'm proud of and I want to make it available to people if they want to read it. But when I was reading these words, the thing that really caught my eye is the idea that professionalism does not allow for continuous transgression because that has to encompass the possibility of failure. What he's saying by this is that if you're always trying to do things in a way that guarantees success, you're never going to grow. You're never going to take constructive risks. And I realized that any, any field, uh, any creative field that I was going to work in where I would be hedging my bets... This is something I was talking about in the previous video, too. Anytime I was hedging my bets, I was probably just setting myself up for failure all along. So when he says professionalism as a lifetime aspiration is a limited goal, he's saying, stick your neck out a little bit. Um, do take risks. You know, don't take undue risks, but, but do think about the fact that if you're trying to do something that reaches people, you're going to have to, you're going to, have to do something that will, that will not necessarily be what everyone else has done and you're going to have to stand by it. And a lot of what I've tried to do in my own work is every time I've done something and I've finished it and I've put it aside and looked at it and I've said, okay, where did I fall short? What else could I do? And so when I start to work on another project, I always think about what the next step above what I did before could be. Where else could I go? I don't like repeating myself. And that's why when I write a book, for me, it's like a one and done thing. I don't do things in a series. Uh, I don't I don't think about things as a trilogy or tetralogy or anything like that. I just like to finish stuff. And so when I'm finished with something, it gives me a chance to sort of partition it off and say, okay, this is this is an object lesson. Let's do a postmortem. Let's figure out what we did right. Let's figure out what we did wrong. And then I can figure out how next time around I can I can push the envelope a bit. I can be I can I can transgress in a constructive way. So that's what I got out of, out of number four. Professionalism is not enough, or the good is the enemy of the great. Basically a way of saying, you really, need, you really do need to think about how to push yourself and, and to not simply try to be content with doing the thing that you know is going to guarantee you success. And that's really, it's easier to say that if your career doesn't depend on it. But at the same time, even if your career does depend on it, you want to think about it. You want to see how your envelopes can be pushed constructively. If you don't think about it at all, then all you're really doing is leaving opportunities on the table. So anyway, that's, ver that's number four from the Milton Glaser lecture. And I will probably have more of these in the future. So see you around.